Hello everyone, this is Human Hard Drive, and today we're continuing on with our Electronics 101 lectures. Um, because I haven't received, well, any viewer submissions uh, for future to for topics for this episode, I'm just going to go ahead and move on. And today we're just going to go ahead and continue on with uh, the topic of capacitors. Now, capacitor. I'll go ahead and give you the schematic symbols for those. A capacitor is an analog electronics device used for the storage of electrical energy. So, what that means is there are, if you've seen these things, they're little, they look like uh, almost tubes with a silver top on top, or at least that's one kind, we'll talk about that a little later. but. They inside are two plates and they're rolled up against one another with uh, some material in between. And what happens is as you apply current to one end, electrons are going to flow across this plate and they're going to want to jump across to the other side because there's a whole bunch of electrons over here and no electrons over here so they don't like each other. It's Coulomb's law. They don't like each other and they want to get away from each other. But they can't because there's something blocking them. So they're all going to fill up to an even distribution until they can get across, and they never can. So there are two kinds. Well, there are two major groups. That's nonpolar and polar. You can see the polar one has a bent side because current can't flow this way, but it can flow this way. Whereas a nonpolar, it can flow in either direction. Doesn't matter. Now I see that those are those are the two big categories. What also separates capacitors apart is the materials they're made of. You've got your tantalums, your aluminums, your ceramics, your electrolytics, all sorts of different kinds of materials used to make these plates. And also the material that goes in between. Some have dielectrics, some don't. So yeah, all different kinds and it's all gonna matter on the application you're looking for. So, let's go ahead and talk about math. When you have a capacitor in a circuit, it automatically becomes an RC circuit. Now that's not radio controlled, that's resistor capacitor circuit. Because, well, you're putting a capacitor in it and any circuit automatically has a resistance unless you've managed to build a superconducting circuit that exists at room temperature. Bravo, by the way. So. Capacitance, so before I get into that, let's draw an RC circuit. So you have some positive voltage, you have a resistor, you have a capacitor, and you have some form of voltage drain. RC. Now, capacitance is defined as the amount of charge per volt. So charge per energy. And capacitance is measured in Farads, after our old friend Faraday. Now, capacitors don't usually come in farad varieties. Or that's to say they don't come in the SI unit 1 farad, 2 farad, 3 farad, 10 farad. In fact, 1 farad uh, capacitors are fairly rare to find in the wild because they are considered to be super capacitors. Now, when I say super, it means that they take time to charge. Not just a little bit of time, they take a lot of time. Because in an RC circuit, it takes time for the capacitor to charge, because there's this resistor which is slowing the flow of current, and the capacitor which can only charge at an, a certain amount of time, which is predicated on its chemistry. Now, one a one farad capacitor with a one ohm resistor attached to it in the circuit will take a whopping one second to charge. One second. Now I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but for things that are changing quickly, um, for things where you need a good amount of reactivity, one second is slow. Now that one second I'm pulling out of the air, that actually comes from an easily derivable formula, if we remember Ohm's law, and we remember that current is charge per time. I'm giving you the non-calculus version, the non calculus version. And if we move those variables around, we see that charge is IT. And so if we plug that back into this, we get IT 
over i r our eyes go away and we see that the time it takes for a capacitor an RC circuit to charge is equivalent to the resistor times the capacitive value. So that one ohm resistor times that one farad capacitor is one second. Now that being said, you, when I say when I said you don't find a lot of one farad capacitors, what you will find a lot of is microfarad capacitors picofarad capacitors, millifarad capacitors, just not a lot in the, you know, standard SI 10 time, uh, 10 raised to the zero. You're going to find them usually in 10 raised to a negative power value. So, let's look at a graph. Because graphs are helpful. So if you look at voltage and time, and this, these are charging graphs, we look at that you see it plateau plat yeah, plateaus at some point at some time and it's going to reach that positive voltage you're putting in whereas the current for an RC circuit starts at a very high value and then cuts off to zero now as current flows into the capacitor, electrons don't like each other, so they're going to start pushing back, and they're not going to let any more fill in. So that's going to slow the amount of current. So the resistive value for a capacitor starts very low, and as you can see, that's because you can see that the current is extremely high. But then, as more electrons flow in, they don't like each other more and more, and they eventually stop letting any more in and that's choking it, but it's not choking it, it's choking it in a very specific fashion, it's choking it in a DC manner. It's choking, wow, it's choking current that flows in one direction for any long amount of time. And that long amount of time is given by that equation. So, what I've got here is this very wonderful Analog simulator app, analog circuit simulator applet. Uh, I'll give you a description. Uh, I'll give you a link to it in the description. And what I'm going to do is here's our five volts. That's our voltage supply, the resistor, capacitor, and ground. Right here is a graph. The green line is going to show the voltage in the capacitor, and the yellow line is going to depict current. You're going to see a bunch of yellow dots flow across, which indicate electron flow. So as you can see, current increases. Uh, not sorry, voltage increases until it gets to its 5 volts, the voltage in, and the current drops to zero. And if I, you see, the dots flow across and then stop flowing. So, again, those electrons don't like each other and they're not going to let any more cross. Now, watch what happens if I say dip the voltage ever so slightly to say like 3.8 volts. You can see the current, the, the voltage drops to meet that. It's pushing, the electrons are feeling some room to move around because they can start to flow backwards because this is a higher, it was at a higher, G, higher energy level so they can start to flow backwards until they reach this equilibrium again. If I drain it again you can see it drops back off. And if I increase it, it starts to charge again. So it has this, the capacitors have this nice ability to try and reach this nice state of equilibrium. And if I shake it wildly, you can see that the current is depicting this rapid change, whereas the voltage doesn't seem to show that. It's staying fairly level, which is another cool thing about capacitors. So while there is all this noise, the voltage stays fairly level. which is a great quality about capacitor. So let's say you've got a voltage supply and you're trying to supply voltage and current for mm, let's say your computer. So here's your computer. And your computer requires a very specific amount of voltage and if you it, it has a very small tolerance 
for changes in voltage. And any change will cause a very unexpected behavior in the computer. Now your voltage supply isn't very sound either. You're trying to run it off of a power strip which is supplying current for 10 other things. And your computer isn't very power efficient and it's changing its, require its needs for current at random times. It needs more, sometimes it needs less. And you need a way to help protect against that. Well, that's the cool thing about capacitors. So what's going to happen here is the voltage is going to charge the capacitor and it's also going to supply power for the computer. But if the voltage supply were to drop or the computer were to start requiring more current, what can happen is the capacitor can let off some of its charge to the computer or the voltage supply to try and keep this state of equilibrium. This is called a decoupling circuit, a decoupling capacitor. It's trying to decouple some of the noise and keep everything level. And a lot of times in this you won't see one capacitor, you'll see maybe two or three. And what they're doing there, there we go, trying to make this look accurate. There, What they're trying to do is they're going to have two capacitors, one of higher capacitance and one of lower capacitance. So the higher capacitance one is slower to react. It can't change its current, it can't change its voltage very quickly. But it's able to give out a more stable voltage for a longer time because it's slower to let out that current. The smaller one is a lot quicker to react. It can pick up on those quick frequency changes, but it's not able to dole out the voltage for a longer amount of time. So you can see a bunch of these. Um, if you've done anything with, uh, what is it, it's a 7405, it's a 5 volt voltage, re yeah, that's a 5 volt re voltage regulator. Uh, you'll use decoupling capacitors on the input and the output to keep everything regulated across the system because your voltage supply could change or the regulator could get some noise on it and it'll keep everything running smoothly. Now, this ability to filter out noise also makes it useful in filters. Now, for you, those of you who know your audio, there are three kinds of filters, but I'm only going to focus on two. There's your low pass filter, and there's your high pass filter. Now, your low pass filter, if you have any a frequency which is greater than the frequency cutoff, it blocks it. And your high pass, if you have a frequency that is lower than the frequency cutoff, it blocks that. Now, the third kind is the band pass filter, which is a combination of these two filters. It protects a very specific frequency range and then drops off at either end. But these are either end of that extreme. You have got the low pass, which blocks a le is a less than, and the high pass, which is a greater than, and it, well, there's, it's just one side of an inequality. So, this FC I'm getting, that's the frequency cutoff, is calculated using this formula, FC equals 1 over 2 pi RC. And you can see some of the things that are coming through here. So this is an audio wave, so it's a sine wave, and 2 pi is the phase for, uh, what is it, it's two complete cycles? Yeah, two cycles, or one circumference for a sine wave, and this RC is 1 over it's the time it takes for a resistor to charge. So that's the phase and the frequency, or one over frequency, which is one over period. So that's sort of like frequency. You can see where it's coming from. And it all has to do with you know, the sine wave. I should point out that this only works with sinusoidal waves. And it only works with, uh, it works better with an AC wave because it has this full charge and full discharge as opposed to a DC, which only has a half charge, half discharge. So, if we look at, if we can go back to the simulator, because it is such an excellent simulator, and it can even simulate, say, a high-pass filter. So here's the frequency input, here's the output. This is what you'd be hearing through, like, a speaker. You can see it has a very low frequency, 
it's not very loud it's only like uh, but as the frequency increases it starts to get louder and louder until it finally hits that FC that frequency cutoff when it is at its max it's almost at the um, input voltage the peak voltage but then again as it as it slows down as the frequency drops so too does the voltage and if we look at the low pass filter the frequency starts very slow but the voltage starts very high but as the frequency increases the the um, noise you're hearing drops off so those are two ends of the filter if you want to see a band pass I think it can even simulate a band pass filter this isn't strictly an RC circuit this is something called an LRC which we'll talk about later but you can see oh, didn't mean to do that speed up the simulation a bit you can see it increasing and then decreasing it's responding to a very specific band of frequencies but we'll talk about that later so oh, wrong one there we go so a low pass filter works because you have a signal and then you pass it through some resistor you pass it through the capacitor which is tied to ground and this is not a polar capacitor this is a nonpolar capacitor and there's your output so here's your C and here's your R I should note that the re I'll talk about this now I guess the reason I gave this I made this a polar capacitor is because I don't want voltage to flow from ground in case that happens it's just being safe I'm just letting it flow through in one direction so sorry I had to get that I had to let that out it's gonna bother me so with this with a uh, low pass filter the signal is connected to the resistor first and then flows out to ground through the capacitor so the capacitor is doing the filtering whereas a high pass filter you've got your signal which throws to, which is thrown to your capacitor and then to your resistor which does the filtering so again each of the each resistor capacitor se um, sequence has its own reactivity which is shown throughout these filters because they respond very well to a very specific frequency range so that does it for capacitors let's just go over what we've learned so capacitors are an analog device used to store electrical energy RC circuits what uh, well, uh, they're measured in farads it's very hard to find a 1 farad but really easy to find a 10 microfarad we learned that the time it takes is equivalent to the resistive times the capacitor we learned the behavior of a capacitor how it charges we learned a couple uses including decoupling noise for a voltage supply and filters both low pass and high pass so that concludes this lecture um, again I am looking for viewer submissions for future topics again um, the episode after the lecture after next will be a, another viewer request so I'm looking for any topics anything that comes to mind it can be completely off topic from whatever we're doing I'm just looking to answer your questions so uh, I guess that's it uh, this has been human hard drive thanks for watching